Something the matter, BJ? Um, you can talk, you know. Oh, can I? This isn't a silent episode. It's not gonna be in black and white or IMAX or claymation or something. We should do a claymation, Jess and BJ. Yes, that'll be very quick. We could do that um, half an I hour I thought you were shows, understanding that we were doing a silent movie. I didn't realize every time you say Muppets, you just go like this. You said the artist. I had no idea what the artist was. Which one, by the way? Won the Academy Award last night. Good All on right. it. Let's talk about the tournament and the big story of the tournament. Really, the only story of the tournament. Since day one, it's been Phil Ivy. Ivy, Ivy, Ivy. Yeah, and now on day four, the story is still Phil Ivy. So that's why today's show is called Ivy, Ivy with Jess and BJ. Shouldn't that be Ivy Four? Oh, I mean, I guess I thought we just liked saying Ivy a lot, but it is day four, so that would make a certain amount of sense. All right, day four, Ivy. So let's settle up with our because our settle up once was again was about Phil no, Ivy. Uh, we started with 182 players. We did, and we set the line on where Phil Ivy would bust at 54 and a half because the money is 54 players. They played down to the money bubble yesterday, and he looked like he was in pretty decent shape heading into it. But then he lost a hand. Yeah, late. he uh, ran into pocket sixes in a race situation, couldn't catch up. That chopped him down kind of low, about, to about 14 big blinds. 14 big blinds, yeah. and then uh, shortly after the money bubble started, bing bang boom, he ran pocket sixes into David Baker's pocket kings and Ivy was gone. Uh, so sick line bookie, Ivy out in 55th place, Ugh. which means I win. Yeah, if he wins one and of those we are two. tied on the over-unders for the All right. week so far. Um, and then we've got our new over-under today and some congratulations and celebrations for WPT ones to watch, Matt Mirafiati, who is turning 24 today. Which, coincidentally, not really, is the line the bookie set for him. Where will he finish? We're gonna, we're supposed to play down to 18 players today. Yes. Uh, he set the line at Mirafiati's age, 24. Will he beat his age? Couple of things to point out. Matt is coming in with around, I believe, 175,000 in chips, which is over 30 big blinds, but still below average. Right. However, Matt is very good at playing a short stack, and he got 17th in this event last year, so he's got Which has no correlation to this on, year, but go ahead. He's done well at the Commerce in yeah. his field with this structure. Uh, so, with that in mind, I am saying birthday goodwill, Matt Marifiotti, mm. and taking the under. I actually really like this line, and so I pretty much just decided whatever you choose, I'm taking the other. No disrespect to Marifiotti but I uh, don't think he's gonna reach 24th just because you picked him. Wow. There's my logic. That worked out for you so many other times. So, so um, Ivy's gone, what, wait a what else is there? If Ivy's gone and Ivy's the only story, um, what are we gonna talk about today? Can you think of anything even slightly interesting that happened yesterday? Um, well, there was the two hash, oh, the John Fan thing. Ah, yeah, John Fan. Did you see that hand? This was very early in the day. John Fan, WPT champion, who won at the bike, um, came in and was in an all-in situation where he, someone had moved all-in and he was trying to decide. He asked to see the all-in button, which is something he had done uh, at Legends a couple years back, and people were kind of miffed by it because it seems like an, a bit of an angle shoot to lead someone to believe that you're asking for the button because you're moving right. all in. He was flipping it like a coin and it landed over the betting line and that really wasn't the issue. Uh, Matt Savage actually in TDA made a rule called the John Fan Rule. If you ask for the button, you are all in. So he asked for the all in button and as soon as Matt heard that, he's like, you're all in, turn your cards up. He had top pair to uh, another player's set and hit John the Fan was limit. You know, as a general rule, if you have a rule named after you, probably not a good thing. <laughs> something you want to keep doing or right. breaking. Now you did say the Hashem. Yeah, we, I started to say the Hashem before. We did have the two Hashem brothers, Joe, uh, WSOP main event winner and, and WPT, WPT champion, uh, and his brother Tony Hashem playing in his first, first WPT event. They both made it into day three. Tony uh, fell out of the field, was eliminated before the dinner break. Joe Hashem was low, but he did make it through the day into the money, still going for his second WPT title. Uh, yes, he is. Uh, he is a little bit below average as, as yes. well. Um, 150. He was at the live streaming feature table with another WSOP main event champion that was, I guess, a 
fairly notable name when you think about it, Phil Helmuth. Phil Helmuth had a rough day yesterday. He did not like the beats he got in the morning and his bust out hand seemed to be his least favorite. He bet the turn with two pair aces and tens. Uh, Danny Illingworth. Was Danny there. Illingworth called him and caught a gut shot wheel on the river. They got it all in and Helmuth just looked at it and was like, is this a joke? Is this real? He called me for a four outer and uh, you know, stormed uh, he out. He tweeted about it too. He was on fire on Twitter talking about Holden being his mistress. And yeah, so he stormed out in Helmuthian fashion. Yeah. And again, if you have a fashion named after you, probably not a good thing. Yeah, um, we had a guy go to the hospital. Oh yeah, dinner break, Barry Woods, not feeling too good. Uh, distended hernia, correct, was the yeah, diagnosis? Yeah, he had severe abdominal pain, went to the hospital, diagnosed with distended hernia. He, and rather than be concerned about his health, he was mostly concerned about getting back Yeah, here. he was tweeting that rather be at the tournament like, kind of just, stuff. Just charge me, I want to go back. And he did come back he and he finished He came back uh, just about two full levels after, had still had 170,000 in chips. Uh, I think that was maybe around 40 big blinds at the time. Did survive the day. He is still in with 129,000, so he's at least converted to 21,000 and still alive with the chance for more. Um, that's a really cool kind of come from behind story, but I have a cooler one for you. What's that? Sorrel Mitzi at one point yes. yesterday was yes. down to 700 chips. I asked a him. A third of a big blind. Yeah, I asked him how many times he was all in in the span of half an hour. He told me it was probably at least seven, like mm -hmm. all in and called. And he, at one point, was up over 200,000. And he then fell back down to under 30,000, which was like six big blinds, and rallied to make the money. And he's got 124,000. So he's short, but, but he's, he's here, which is right. amazing. And again, without reaching the money, the comeback doesn't mean anything, but he's at least converted yeah. it to uh, a And cash. then he also ended the day at what I think. We have a consensus this time. Yes, the toughest agree table with you the on room. the feature, the stack table today. Not only did this table have a ton of talent, it had a ton of chips. By the end of the day, it had 20% of the chips in play on this single table because it ended with chip leader Tuan Fan there. It ended with Jason Somerville, who was second in chips there. Between those players alone, you have over 1.9 million right. chips. And there was a period where the bust outs just kept coming at that table. Uh, it was very low, like not a lot of action, even though you had all these big stacks, and we knew it would come to a head eventually. And it, it came to a head in a hand where uh, Andrew. Andrew Lichtenberger doubled through Vanessa Russo. Yes. Then Andrew Lichtenberger ran a smaller set into Jason Somerville's set in the biggest pot of the day. Right, all in on the river, and that catapulted Somerville to the chip and lead Tuan, at the time. But then Tuan Fan busted Sean Deeb, and then busted Dan O'Brien to take the chip lead back, and it was just back and forth all day at this ridiculous table. Yes. All right, so I think that's uh, surprisingly, even without yeah, Ivy. I was Wait a minute. And then this the day ended. kind of awesome. And then the last hand of the day was Ivy busting out, and that's it. And uh, maybe we don't need Ivy in this tournament to have an interesting Frankly, story. Frankly, I think we're doing just fine without him. Um, though it was a great story to see him come back after that year-long absence. Uh, question of the day, since, All right. we, since today's show was Ivy, Ivy, or Ivy, Ivy 4. 4. Favorite movie with a Roman numeral in the title? With a Roman numeral in the title. Yes, uh, for example, mine is Psycho 4, which even though it's the fourth in the Psycho series, is actually a prequel that shows you how Norman Bates got to be so Norman Batesy. Never saw it, but that actually sounds a good movie. Uh, it's campy, which of okay, course I Okay, pass, love. pass. All right, I'm gonna go Godfather 2. Really? Yes, uh, awesome film. I, I don't think it's better than Godfather the original, but still an awesome movie. Um, it is, uh, to me, I think it's better than the Godfather the original. I'm just surprised you're not going to pick uh, Star Wars 5. No, that movie is called Empire Strikes Back. But I mean, you're episode There's no, 5, it's become part of the The vernacular. Roman numeral didn't enter the title until George Lucas made the special editions. The special edition is called Star Wars Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. But the special edition sucks because he changed it's not, stuff. But it's not like some man on the street started calling it Star Wars 5. The guy who came up with the movie said but it's But that's Star not Wars the 5. one I like. I like the one just called Empire Strikes Back. Well, God Strikes forbid Back. George Lucas's opinion on how Star Wars should be so it's defense a different to BJ movie. It's a different movie. 